Well, good morning, good morning. As Devin said, my name is Maggie Moore, and I am the Communications Director and adopt block Assistant Director here for the Emanuel Network. So I actually work out of Emanuel Salisbury, but it is a blessing and an honor to be here in Fruitland with you all this morning. Amen. Well, this morning, um, I want to ask you guys to stand for the reading of God's Word. We will be in the book of John this morning, chapter 21, verses 15 through 19. And they say, when they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of Peter, do you love me? And Peter was hurt because Jesus had asked him a third time, do you love me? And he said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus said, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. And then he said to him, follow me. Let's pray. God, I thank you for bringing us all here this morning, God. I thank you for your word and that it rings true, God. God, I thank you that your word doesn't come back void. And so we turn to you this morning, expectant of how you will speak to us through this story in John. God, we love you and we praise you. And I pray this in your son's name. Amen. All right, and you guys can be seated. Um, The title of my sermon this morning is, Now What? And how many of us have found ourselves in situations where we're left wondering, now what? I'm sure a few of us this morning, maybe all of us can agree that oftentimes life leaves us wondering, what's next? What is to come? Where do I go next? What is next for me? And so back in 2019, um, I was getting ready to graduate from Salisbury University with a master's in social work. And so naturally, I started looking and preparing for my first big girl job, my first job outside of college. And after earning both a bachelor's and a master's degree in social work, attending various seminars, different trainings, gaining a few experiences from different internships, it only made sense to get a job in the field of social work, right? (laughs) However, (laughs) um, I had had this push in my heart, a pull that I felt to find a way to do the things that I love, the things that I had been trained to do, which ultimately can be summed up to love on people and to help them, but I wanted to find a way to do that while also serving God in a full-time ministry position. And by the time that this was placed on my heart, I had no idea what that looked like. I was in high school. I wasn't even in college yet. And I didn't know what kind of position would be out there in ministry for me. I knew there was a pastor, maybe some people who go on mission trips, a worship leader, and that was it. I had no idea what God could possibly do to have a space in full-time ministry for me. And so in 2019, as I'm preparing to graduate and I'm looking for jobs, I found myself in a place of conflict between my heart and my head, having a desire and a passion to do one thing, but feeling a push to do something else. Neither one of them being a bad option, but I had a conflict and I had to make a choice. And so ultimately, I was left wondering, now what? What's next for me, God? Am I supposed to just look for a job doing the things that I had been trained to do, the things that had become familiar and comfortable to me? Or was I supposed to trust him and the call that he had placed on my heart and wait patiently as a space in full-time ministry was being prepared for me? And so in Scripture today, we read of the last encounter that the disciple Peter 
have had with Jesus before he ascended into heaven after he was resurrected. But if you were to go back and read what happens before that conversation, you would see that the disciples have gone back to something that was once familiar to them. They went back to fishing. As you may know, some of the disciples were fishers by nature and by profession. So to fish for fish was something that was natural. It was comfortable. It was familiar to them. It was easy to go back to. So in the absence of their leader, in the absence of Jesus, they were left wondering, now what? And so what did they do? They went back to what was comfortable. They went back to what they knew because it was easy to do something that was comfortable for them. And so I wonder this morning, how many of us here today have chosen to go back to something that's familiar, something that's comfortable, in the face of a situation that has left us wondering, now what? So this morning, I want to give you guys three ways or three things that you can remember when you are left wondering, now what? And so the first point today is we have to follow God. And I mean that we truly have to follow him. What motivates you guys to follow Christ? It can't just be the good things that happen in your life because if you're like me, it's not always rainbows and sunshine, right? So what motivates you to follow God in the moments that aren't peachy keen, that aren't the best of the best. Because a relationship with Christ is something that you work for. A relationship with your heavenly father isn't a family heirloom. And I may be stepping on some toes here when I say that. It's not something that gets passed down from generation to generation to generation. It's not something that because grandma and grandpa or mom and dad had that you now have too. And I find myself saying that to myself and out loud to others a lot because it's true. Following Jesus is a personal decision that each and every one of us has the opportunity and the choice to make. It's something you either do or you don't. So let me ask you all this morning. Do you have a personal and real relationship with Christ this morning? I mean, like, do you genuinely get excited with the thought of getting to commune with your father every day? Do you read his word? Do you pray to him? Do you talk to him? Do you listen for him? Or is the idea of a relationship with Christ something that you've created a checklist for? All right, God, well, I came to church today. I tithed. I listened to the Christian radio. Like, I hope that's good enough for you today, God. That's all I have time for. Sorry. No. (laughs) A relationship with Christ is something beyond the checklist. It's something that you intentionally seek after. It's something that you intentionally work towards. And how many times do we get caught up in the things that we claim to be doing for him that we forget who we get to do them with? And we forget who we were intentionally and purposely created to do them for. And how often do we fool ourselves into thinking that checking things off of a list is good enough for the God of the universe? This morning we sang a song that said, God so loved the world that he gave his only son to save us. Yo, Jesus came and lived a perfect, spotless life. And he died a painful, horrible death. He fought and defeated the enemy and death itself. And then he rose victoriously again. Amen? We celebrated that just last week. And he did that for you and for me. And you want to know why he did that? So that we could be in communion with him again. He hated the fact that we were separated from him. He couldn't stand it, and so he did something about it, ultimately leaving us to do something about getting back in relationship with him. 
And so I don't know about you this morning, but I don't think checking things off of a checklist is good enough of a demonstration of love for a God that would do something like that for me. But don't get it twisted. I, I don't get it right every single time. I'm, I'm not perfect. I'm human. Amen? Any other people who are human this morning? <laughs> And so because we're human, we have a tendency to fall off the tracks, right? We have a tendency to get a little out of line every once in a while. And so God likes to check in with us, offer us a piece of redemption, if you will. And that's exactly what we find him doing this morning as we read about Jesus talking with Peter. But before we get into that, I want to go back to before Jesus was even arrested. And he warns Peter that Peter will deny ever knowing Jesus three times before the rooster crows. And we see this played out in Matthew 26, verses 69 through 75. And it reads, Now Peter was sitting out in the courtyard, and a servant girl came to him. You also were with Jesus of Galilee, she said. But he denied it before them all. I don't know what you're talking about, he said. Then he went out to the gateway where another servant girl saw him and said to the people there, this fellow was with Jesus, the Nazareth. And he denied it again with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, those standing there went up to Peter and said, surely you're one of them. Your accent gives you away. Then he began to call down curses and he swore to them, I do not know the man. And immediately a rooster crowed. Then Peter remembered the words Jesus had said to him. Before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. You see, Jesus predicted what Peter would do. And Peter fulfilled Jesus' prediction. But Jesus dared not allow that to result in condemnation. Rather, Jesus chose to invite Peter to live a story of restoration, a story of redemption. Because you see, each time Peter denied Jesus, he came back and restored him and asked, Simon Peter, do you love me? But if we take a closer look into the conversation that Jesus is having with Peter this morning, we see that in each moment of asking Peter, do you love me, Jesus also gives him a call to action. He tells him to feed my lambs, take care of my sheep, and feed my sheep. And I believe that that's a call to action for every single one of us this morning even when you don't feel like it, even when you don't think you're good enough, even when you don't know what that looks like, feed my lambs. You may be reading that and you're like, God, I don't know what that means. Like, I don't even know if I know how to do that. But he calls you to do it anyway. He says, feed my sheep. And that's our second point this morning. We have to feed his sheep. Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20 says, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey the commands I have given to you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Jesus didn't say to go and make disciples if you feel like it. He didn't say, teach them the commands that I've given you if you want to. He simply says to do it. Therefore, go. Therefore, make. Therefore, teach. And as Christians, we've been blessed with the responsibility and the opportunity to help each other and others outside of our families, outside of our friend groups, outside of our school classes, outside of it all, 
to help them find, draw closer to, and follow Christ. Jesus has entrusted us to share the greatest story of unconditional love, of complete restoration and redemption with the world. And the best part is he's promised that his power and presence will help us along the way. Mm. But we have to boldly and courageously step into that calling, amen? It's not something that we can be stagnant in or say, oh, I'll get it the next time, God. It's a daily, a daily thing, a daily call that we have to boldly and courageously step into because when we do that, we open ourselves up to be able to flourish in our individual callings that God has placed on our lives. And that's my third point this morning is you have to flourish in your calling. And so I, I want to invite the worship team back up as we enter our third point. Each and every one of us has been given a specific purpose in life. We were each carefully knitted and crafted in our mother's wombs for a specific calling that God has given us. In Ephesians 2.10, the Apostle Paul writes, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God has prepared in advance for us to do. Now, there have been several times in my life where I've tried running from that call, running from the purpose that God intentionally knitted and crafted me to do. And I'm sure at least some of us this morning can relate to that. Amen? But because I've grown confident in God's love for me, and I've chosen to boldly love and honor him in all that I do. I've discovered that there's no better way to go. There's no better place in life to be than to be in the calling God has given me. And praise God that his plans and the calling on my life that he's given me and the call that he's given you on your life is far better than any dream you could have thought of for yourself. Church, God is asking you this morning, do you love me? But more than that, he's asking, do you love me more than these? And that's what he first said to Simon Peter in the conversation we read earlier this morning is, Simon Peter, do you love me more than these? And for Peter, these men, do you love me more than these people you are with? Do you love me more than the fish that you catch when you're out on the boat? Do you love me more than these? And I don't know what these is for you. But God is asking, do you love me more than that? Do you love me more than these? And when he asks you that, what he's truly getting at is, what am I calling you to? Or what am I calling you from? Because what I have for you is so much better than where you are. So much better than the things you've dreamed of, than you've thought up for yourself, or what you've gotten yourself into. I am greater, and I love you, and I chose you. And I've created you for more. So church, do you love him this morning? Do you really love him? Now whether you have found yourself in a season of now what? In a season of wondering where to go next or not. I want to encourage you to lean into Christ this morning. Lean into the love that he has for you. I want you to surround yourself with people who will feed you willingly, especially in moments where you don't even want to feed yourself, where you feel like you can't feed yourself. And I want you to find others to encourage daily, to feed daily. And then I want you to take each day, 
step by step. Because this is a, a process. It's not an overnight thing. Finding out what God's purpose for you is not just going to show up at your doorstep the next day. It's something that you have to intentionally step into every single day. And I want you to confidently walk in that purpose that God has intentionally created you for. Let's pray. Father God, we come to you this morning expectant for you to move, but also willing to move forward in your call, in your will, God. God, I thank you for your word and that it doesn't come back void, God, that when you say that you will be with us, God, in every step of the way, we trust you with that. We trust that you will be with us, God. So, God, I ask that you give us the courage, you give us the boldness it takes to step deeper into a calling that you give us, God. God, we love you, and we praise you for all that you've done, all that you're doing, and all that you will do. We pray this in your son's name. Amen. All right, well, you guys are dismissed. Thank you guys so much for having me this morning. It was a, a pleasure to be with you.